Why, hello there, wonderful people. Ignore how chapped and bloody my lips look. I have severe anxiety, so I pick at them. So for those who don't know me, my name is Kiwi. I am a competitive Super Smash Bros. Ultimate player. I've been in the community for about 13 years. I joined the community when I was 12. And this is a topic that has been discussed ever since I joined the community. It's about female-only brackets at Smash events. This topic has been going kind of rampant recently. I've been seeing a ton on Twitter and such, which is why I wanted to make this video. I've been wanting to make it for a long time. As it's kind of a hot topic, I feel like now is the time to do it. You've probably noticed that discussing things on Twitter, especially serious topics like this, doesn't typically go very well. I want to dive into this topic as in-depth as I can. I want to provide all perspectives that I possibly can. I just want to have a genuine and fair conversation. The reality is that both sides, I think, are on the same page, which is why it's unfortunate that it's resulting in a lot of toxicity. Not that it always is, but I've seen it. I have personally already been blocked by several women for my opinions on this topic. So let's talk. I conducted some interviews for this video, so you're gonna see some footage from interviews I had with Supergirl Kells, Cheyenne, Dr. Piggy, and Miss Saiyan. And I appreciate them all so much for taking the time to interview with me. I got a lot of input and perspectives from them that I hadn't really thought of before. So the question here is, do you support female-only competitive brackets? The short answer to that is, personally, no, I do not support them. I want to start out with why women do want these brackets to happen, because I think it'll help me convey my perspective a little better. And again, I want all sides to be portrayed here. So we're gonna start with the pros that women list for female-only brackets. So real quick, before I dive into the pros and cons of these female-only brackets, I want to establish why this is even a conversation. I think it's pretty obvious that a lot of women don't feel very comfortable, don't feel very safe. The reality is that misogyny is existent all over the world. The problem is we're in a community dominated by men. It is a lot easier to see and experience these problems within this community because it's so ratioed men to women. Being a woman has influenced everything if only because uh, it, it's how other people treat me, right? Like, I don't really particularly think like, oh, I'm a girl, thus I relate to Smash differently. It's like the people in Smash relate to me differently. Exactly, so, yeah. Um, even at the very beginning, um, you know, I was nervous about going to like local events by myself and I went with my now spouse, um, then boyfriend. And, um, you know, of course it was your so-and-so's girlfriend. Right, and I wasn't treated as a gamer in my own right, uh, or you know, called by my own name. Oh, that's so and so's girlfriend. Um, so I didn't like that. That's when I yeah. first started commentary because I really wanted to start doing something for me or like uh, my own identity. And although it's true that inequality exists everywhere, I think this is such a huge problem within gaming communities because of that ratio, and that's why it's a conversation because it is more men than women, that is why we need to accommodate the women and make sure that they can be comfortable. So it makes sense that a lot of women are advocating for these events because we'll get into these reasons, but these women think that it can be a safe space, that it can help us in the long run, it can introduce new women into the community. Like women's points of, you know why, like I feel uncomfortable being with so many men and competing amongst the woman makes me feel welcomed. Because right. I get that, like, I, I hate walking into tournaments and I have my own inside jokes and things I want to talk yeah. about, like my period that I can't talk about with guys. <laughs> yeah. So I get it. And I don't blame them for their reasons. I think they are extremely valid reasons. It's true that just about every single woman I have ever talked to in this community has some kind of story to share about being harassed. I would say, like, one time I did experience, like, someone that I felt like I, I I needed to tell the people around me that this person was following me in right. a tournament setting. I think that was, that would be, and you know, it kind of, it spills outside of the tournament setting where they start messaging you on social yeah. media and stuff. Um, 
So I have experienced that. So I think step one here is let's all just recognize that this is a problem. Being a woman in this community does have its hardships and we need to work on them. I can actually be really shy. When I start yeah. talking yeah. about important issues, I get a loud mouth, but like just talking, just being around people is really hard. <laughs> And yeah, it is even harder when I think like, has is this one of the guys that doxed me? Or yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, is this somebody that like posted on that thread that I deserve to be, you know, sexually violated or whatever? Like, <laughs> hmm, now I'm suddenly even more nervous and awkward. <laughs> So the first argument that women are for female-only brackets is probably the most common one you're going to see, which is it provides a safe space for women in the community. I guess there may be, I could say that there's a need for it because I have met girls who won't participate unless there's something that is specifically like marketed towards like, oh, this is like really open for you if you're a girl. like. This is like your experience, like an experience for you, basically. Again, we suffer a lot of struggles being a woman in this community. I actually talked about it very much in depth in a video I've already made. I'll link that video and I really recommend you watch that video before watching this one because it touches on a lot of topics that I don't really have time to go in depth for in this video. So many people say like, oh, I, w I wish we had more women in the community. I want more women in the community. And I think acknowledging there's a problem is the first step to that. So having these women only brackets would mean that, you know, it's not like we're banning men from events. I imagine these would be similar to Smash Sisters where, you know, you're in the same venue. It's not, maybe it's not the main event. Maybe it's a side event, female only bracket. I don't know. It's a place where in a community with so few women, you can actually meet women face to face and know you're not alone, which is truly a very empowering feeling to know you're not alone. You can meet other women, you can share your experiences, you can just have fun, you can connect, which is hard to do. Personally, in my region, I can think of maybe like four women that consistently compete, which is not a lot compared to the hundreds of men in my region. So the next point I've heard in favor of female-only brackets is that it prepares women for competition and co-ed tournaments. I've already touched a bit on this, but you know, if women aren't comfortable in a venue with a hundred men and being the only woman there, maybe it's, it's going to be harder to compete. Maybe they're going to be worried about being judged or being shit-talked or like, oh, of course the girl is going to go 0-2 and, and then there's the pressure to perform, etc, etc. When you're the only girl in a room of a hundred men, whether it's true or not, it's really easy to believe that a magnifying glass is put on you. You are under a microscope. You are in the spotlight. Everyone is watching you, judging you, etc. It's harder in terms of pressure. Yes. I think it comes with that. Yeah. The pressure and the mentality to build is way harder on a woman. Right. Um, from experience from both of us. But I think it comes down to it's harder because there's less of us. It's right. the ratio of is 2,000 men going to get to the top or is the one out of, you know, six to 30 women at a tournament going to get to the top? There is a phenomenon uh, pretty, that was pretty popular for a few years um, in social site called stereotype threat, where basically if you remind somebody that like you're part of a group that's bad at this, um, that's really distracting and really hard to overcome or it's just another barrier to overcome right right so if if i'm sitting in the venue and i'm just playing friendlies with somebody and like there are six guys watching because i'm the only girl in the venue and they want to see if i'm any good suddenly i'm thinking about that on top of what i'm playing in the match so the theory is that if you're doing this in an environment with only other women you're not going to feel so alienated and perhaps it'll adjust you accordingly for competition which will make it easier for you to enter co-ed tournaments in the future. I agree that the, that the experience of Smash Sisters right now is much more about camaraderie building, um, cheering on somebody else in your group, or learning from somebody else, or just making a connection, right? And I'm, st despite that, I still would love to see a one-on-one -on -one sort of bracket. The reason I would want to see that is because Smash Sisters, when, when I've played or commentated it, is a good experience for all those feel-good reasons. Um, but I don't know how much it helped me transition into that real world bracket where I choked. I don't know how much it helped me take personal responsibility for my performance. <laughs> I didn't get the kind of feedback, um, except in game, right? <laughs> like, oh, oh, uh, this missed, this hit, 
this combo was interrupted, I, I made the wrong decision, right? That all happens in the game, but um, not quite in the, in the same intensity as when you're playing one-on-one -on -one with somebody for three matches. You know, it's like four stocks, not, not, uh, not a best of three. So I feel like those one-on-one -on -one tournament experiences with enough people that are invested could help, it could be like the, the stepping stone between, okay, we're all doing this for fun just to get to know each other and I wanna make it out of pools. Next, we have the argument that female-only brackets have been very successful in other competitive gaming communities. I've heard from women in team-based games like shooters, etc., that female-only events have benefited them greatly. We also can't forget that there is a women's league for chess. From a research perspective, um, we can look at chess. So chess is another field in which like sensory motor skill or, you know, sex-based characteristics like muscle mass or whatever aren't really going to determine performance. And so it doesn't, it seems on the surface, like it doesn't make sense to segregate anybody. Um, however, because chess was such like a masculine field um, for so long, there are actually entire prizes and tournaments and all that kind of thing for women. Um, so there isn't theoretically anything stopping a woman from becoming the number one player. Um, but right now in the world we have, uh, there are social forces. Hey guys, Kiwi here. While I'm editing, I just wanted to point out that I reached out to a few chess players who are women as well as even FGC players who are women to try and ask them about their perspectives because I know that chess in particular does have the women's league and I really wanted their perspective on how they make it work, especially in a 1v1 competitive environment, but Unfortunately, none responded back to me, so I can't really provide that perspective for you guys. There are women's leagues, honestly, for a lot of gaming communities now, and when so many people say that it has had a positive impact for them, that is a hard thing to ignore, and it's a valid point to bring up. Which again, I should clarify, this is only a discussion for Smash events to me. If you're in another gaming community and these female-only brackets are working for your community, who am I to speak against that? That's fine. But I am talking from experience within Smash Brothers only. This kind of segues into a similar point of women have mentioned that they have benefited greatly from women only clubs, groups, schools, etc. in the past. They have such positive experiences that they think bringing that experience to Smash will have the same positive impacts here. Again, yeah, I feel like women only schools and all that, it's, it's, it's not competitive. It's just an environment, it's a community where a safe space you can call it yeah where women do feel comfortable and i'm happy that you know whoever you saw this from this this quote that they have met so many individuals that have changed their lives or experience because that's what women should do they should be the community and support each other and give each other opportunities and have things that they remember for sure and that's what we were just talking about right um, and i think that's what women only schools do represent I don't yeah. think there's anything wrong with that, no. Yeah. Another argument I have heard is that these female-only brackets give women more opportunities. I have heard also from these other gaming communities that do these things I brought up before that they have had women get prizes, get sponsorships, get more visibility in general. The argument is just that they are able to get their names out there easier with these female only brackets. Which I understand that when you have a tournament of 100 men, it's unlikely that the woman is going to get her time to shine when there are 100 men that may be put on stream and only one woman. But meanwhile, while if you're in a venue of only women, then obviously women are gonna get their time to shine. Well, in general, like a lot of girls growing up may not have experience or exposure to playing competitive games while guys are already used to all that. And in fact, there's, you know, smash houses where top players play against each other and it's usually all guys. So we don't have it, that experience unless we make it for ourselves. It, that those, those are the kind of different opportunities I would say put you know us a little bit more of a di at a disadvantage sometimes mm -hmm. it's 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 gonna have to be up to to us to do it the final argument here is that it doesn't hurt anyone female only brackets don't hurt anyone it's positive intentions and it can only be seen as a benefit 
So these are all of the points that I personally have seen been made, at least the points that have been brought up the most. And again, I think all of these points are valid. I don't hold it against any woman for having these opinions. I totally understand where they're coming from. However, with all this being said, I still am against these events and I want to dive into why that is. So I want to bring up all the points I just brought up that are for the events and I want to state my counter argument to those points. So again, obviously the biggest argument here is that female-only brackets will create a safe space for women. In a way, I don't deny that, and I also understand that completely. I've heard a lot of stories from women that partook in Smash Sisters, which is an event that's held at Major sometimes where women can sign up and meet each other at a side event in the venue, where they can sign up for a competitive crew battle or a casual crew battle. They get a bunch of women together and they do crew battles and they record these crew battles they don't stream it they record it with commentary men are allowed to show up and show their support and I've heard that it is generally 99% positive which is really good that's great the guys there were like pretty supportive I like enjoyed watching it and commenting mm. like, like they commented on the games and stuff but I didn't remember hearing anything negative so it was good. all around positive it's nice uh, meeting some of the girls that didn't even realize played like I saw them at the event but right they didn't relate to anything else so it was it was definitely good for bringing some of the girls out with a GameCube controller in hand and that's one of the things that I appreciate about like an all girls sort of event. really refreshing to like walk into somebody make eye contact and then be like oh cool who do you play what region are you from um how would you describe your skill level do you want to do the casual or the competitive groups right and like actually have somebody like care about me as, as a player for like half a second yeah <laughs> that just, like that automat that already made me feel like i'm not just this invisible face or uh and, and i'm not just the only girl in this conversation like right and, um seeing that there's you know there's 10 other girls already signed up like that was kind of cool right i'm gonna get more in depth on this topic but i think that smash sisters does its job well i don't think we need to go further than something like smash sisters and turn it into a competitive bracket i think more casual events for women get the job done when the primary argument is well we want women to feel safe i do think it's helpful to actually you think about what's happening before the tournaments too you know, it'd be nice if more women were like joining up together to help each other prepare for tournaments too, you know, play against each other, maybe get together in groups, you know, safely, obviously at this point, but session with each other, stuff like that, you know, preparing before it too, I think it's also helpful. Which this kind of ties into that other argument that female only brackets can prepare women for one on one competition in co ed tournaments. So, again, I understand where they're coming from, but here's my problem with this. I don't think that you need specifically one on one brackets to prepare women for competition. That That's the issue I have with it. It's like, oh, it's a primer for the main co ed bracket. Well, then you're like setting a lower standard for like. You know, like women in general. I think that events like Smash Sisters do their job at getting women ready for competition, but it's in a non-1v1 environment. You still can sign up for the competitive crew battle. The beauty there is that it's not any one person's fault if you lose. So yeah, maybe you're not preparing for losing and knowing that it's on you only if you lose, but at the same time, you're still under pressure in a crew battle. Sometimes it's even more pressure than a normal bracket match to be in a crew battle because just like how it's not one person's responsibility if the team loses you all have to do your part so that can make it even more scary the thought of like oh my god my team is relying on me i have to win not to mention these crew battles get pretty hyped up you know there's commentary it's recorded a lot of people are yelling and watching and it's really hyped up so i think these crew battles to be honest do their job although i don't want to speak on behalf of all women of course there are women that say that these crew battles don't fully prepare them for one-on-one -on -one competition and that's fine so my response to that is if you want to be ready for one-on-one -on -one competition you might laugh at me for this but hear me out do wi-fi tournaments the beauty of wi-fi tournaments which is not the lag and shitty connection 
But the beauty of Wi-Fi tournaments is that you don't even know the gender of who you're playing. Like, you could potentially be entering a Wi-Fi bracket that actually is mostly women. You know, what are the odds of that? Probably astronomically low. But the point is that you don't know. Unless you're searching up all of your opponents or you're, you already know them ahead of time, you probably don't know their gender. Like I've said in the past, I'm a pretty known player and Kiwi is pretty commonly a tag for a woman, I've noticed. But despite that, so often in Wi-Fi tournaments, I have these people thinking I'm a guy. I have people referring to me as bro, dude, guy in these GG chats. And although the argument is that they're generally seen as gender neutral terms these days. I have even had situations where I have had lag tests and my opponent will say something like, oh yeah, he called a lag test. Like they don't even know I'm a girl. They have no idea because they're we're not face to face. We're just a stranger behind a computer screen. So although the lag might suck a lot, believe me, I feel you there. I think Wi-Fi tournaments would be a really good introduction for women to get accustomed to competition. You don't have all the men staring at you and stuff like that, but you're still under pressure in Wi-Fi tournaments to perform. Especially when a lot of Wi-Fi tournaments these days do have small prize pods and stuff and they make top 8 graphics, etc, etc. Myself and a lot of my friends have all agreed that Wi-Fi is actually really stressful and I'm not trying to deter anyone from giving it a shot, but what I'm saying is that if these girls want to be experienced in one-on-one -on -one competition, I think Wi-Fi is a fine place to do it. Enter these brackets. No one's gonna know you're a girl. You don't know if your opponent's a girl. You can just play as two anonymous strangers and there's no pressure of these guys staring at you and being like, oh, is she gonna suck or not? But you still are getting that competitive experience where the goal is to win. You're playing to win regardless. The idea is, is that like a lot of women are feel anxiety and stuff, but you know, I, you know, just thinking about it from the other side, I, I do know, you know, some guys and men who, who also experience anxiety in a yep. tournament setting. Whether it's the same as ours, you know, who knows, uh, but they do also experience anxiety. And also, you know, when a guy is kind of put up against a girl in bracket, I feel like there is some sort of pressure on them not to lose to the girl. You know, thinking about the other side, it's like, it's like this toxic masculinity thing. Not that I'm saying everyone is like that, but like, I'm sure there is sometimes pressure from like their peers, you know, especially if they're younger or something. So it's like they're kind of under this pressure too. Now you're probably asking, Kiwi, I don't know what the problem is still with having these female only brackets. You're just giving alternatives to them without stating what the problem is. And hear me out, we're gonna get there. It's the biggest topic, so I wanna save it for last. So let me just quickly go through the rest of the points. We talked about the point of these female-only brackets give women more opportunities. They get prize pots, they get sponsorships, they get more visibility in general. So I did say earlier that I understand that point, but I'm gonna be honest, this point bothers me a decent amount. I have worked incredibly hard over these past 13 years to get to the point that I am. Like I said in my last video, being a woman does help me get more visibility than many men on my same level. But I do want to believe that I am known not just for my gender, but for the fact that I am a genuinely good player. Again, I'm not trying to toot my horn, but I took number two in the world to game five. I have a PGR win. I have several top 100 wins. Anyone who can say that they've done those things, I would call a good player. So I would like to say that I have earned my recognition and my spotlight and my opportunities, which is why this argument bothers me a bit. Because the argument is this will give women opportunities. This will give women the chance to be seen. And it's like, well, I I already am seen and it's because I've worked really damn hard for it, just like the guys did. This may upset people and I apologize for that, it's just truly my belief, but if you want to be sponsored and visible, etc., if you want to be recognized for your achievements, then you need to play on the same field as everyone else. I, like, I don't want to be so aggressive about this, but I worked fucking hard to get yeah. to where I am. It's a constant seven day job, no breaks kind of thing. I got to where I was, I have the opportunities I have and it pisses me off, oh, cause you're a girl, no. 
Like, right. yeah, it might help because, you know, I might have some boobs, you know, to be like, yo, I'm, I'm unique, but it comes down to the person I am. It comes down to uh, the rankings I get. It comes down to the content I create and what company wants to work with me. I wouldn't right. be with who I am if it wasn't what I did to work. Um, and that goes for you as well. It goes for Vicky, who is not only just branding Queen. and smash, but everywhere. Yeah. Right. So it's really the work ethic you put into this where it's like, do, do, do girls want this or not? Yeah. And you need to work for it. I worked really damn hard to get to where I am. And it would feel genuinely upsetting if we had these female only brackets and women were getting the same opportunities or potentially even more for not as much work as I have put in. So I don't blame women wanting to be seen more, but I do think the blunt truth is we're in a competitive environment and you need to earn that. And I don't disagree that the journey to get there may be harder, but I think that's something that at this current moment we have to deal with and we have to fight through the best we can and we can try to accommodate for those struggles the best we can with casual women only events smash sisters stuff like that the next dual point that they were bringing up was a that women have benefited from these female only brackets in other gaming communities and b that women have benefited from women only groups clubs schools etc before so i have a theory that the reason that groups clubs schools etc do well is because they're not supposed to be competitive environments in these environments you're encouraged to connect and even work with your fellow women i think that's an incredibly different environment from sitting down next to a woman and fighting to see who's the better of the two. To which people are going to bring up, well, you just said that female only brackets in other competitive communities do well. I have learned this lesson even semi recently where I saw a female only tournament for another game. It was some shooter game, I think, for like a 10k prize pot. And I just immediately saw red. I saw female only tournament Ew, not that. I have bad experiences with that. Fuck that. And I even tweeted about it like, oh, I hate this. But it was a wake up call for me because there were a lot of women in that community that said, hey, this is actually pretty good for us because we're a team based game. Women only events actually encourages and promotes camaraderie between the women, which is where I think one on one competitive games and team based games are different with those things like it's not so pointedly like singled out like yeah oh this girl versus this girl it's like these girls versus these girls and the gender thing is just sort of an aside like on a macro level like yeah it's all girls but like right a little like more zoomed in it's not even like that much of a focus right it's not one v one or anything like that and it makes me think back on my experiences and the experiences of so many other women I've talked to where it's like weird. Like how are these other team-based communities making it work? Meanwhile, in my 13 years of being in the Smash community, it has not worked here. It's only caused problems. And I think the answer is just a simple one, which is in a 1v1 environment, your goal is to be the best player of the two. In co-ed tournaments, the only common denominator there is that you're just trying to be the best player in the game. It doesn't matter what your race is, what your gender is, what your height is, your sexuality is, etc, etc. It's all irrelevant. You're just trying to be the best player. So there's no need to compare yourself to other people who have completely different characteristics from you. The only common thing is you're there to play a game. However, the second that you divide this into women only, What's the common denominator now? The common denominator is the gender. It's that they're all women. So now your goal isn't to just be the best player. It's to be the best female player. And when we're a minority already as it is, this can cause a lot of problems. I, th I, just, I just feel like there could definitely be better ways to integrate uh, more shy girls into the scene than right. 1v1. Because like, I don't know how 
people don't think that that would be weird to some of the other girls because like for me like it just feels weird like I don't want to go in like against another girl being like oh my gosh like this is for all the marbles like who's the right. best girl in this scene blah 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 exactly because like, like you already see the stuff on Twitter like who's the best female smasher and then that mm -hmm. just adds like another like layer to like that one bracket set like if you're fighting another girl like even if it's not oh like whoever wins this is the best female smasher between the two of them yeah it's like that thought is there so the final point that i've heard been brought up is this doesn't hurt anyone this can only be a good thing and that is where I say I am living proof that that is incorrect, as well as many other women I've talked to. So in Brawl, I started out as some filthy 0-2-er. <laughs> I went 0-2 for maybe like six months or so when I started competing. And then I finally started to get wins here and there. In those six months that I was not very good, I looked up to women that competed. There were even way fewer then than there are now. So back then, I was admittedly pretty naive to the whole, like, best female smasher issue because I wasn't even part of the conversation. I didn't know how it could affect women in that conversation because I did not have that experience yet. I quickly learned what that was like in summer of 2009 where I went to Game Unicon SNES. I beat my first top player when I was 13. There was a whole crowd behind me cheering, going crazy. Even despite how few of us there were, the guys decided to compare us anyway and make tier lists and such. So when I beat that top player at that tournament, I now was involved in these conversations of who is the best female smasher. Kiwi might be the best female smasher now. And I even remember on Allus Brawl, shoutouts to Allus Brawl, don't bring that shit back. There was, there was a blog post asking who is the best girl smasher and a lot of people started to bring me up. And as much as it felt good to be seen, that satisfaction quickly faded when I noticed the animosity that other women were having towards me. Again, I talked about this in my last video, but really quick, I, an example of this is that I played a girl in amateur bracket in a brawl tournament. Amateur bracket. People were hyping this setup like crazy. They put us on stream, on the mainstream. There was a huge, enormous crowd. It went to game three. We timed out one of the games. Like it was a very long and intense set. And I don't think it's a coincidence that that set was so hyped up when it was two girls fighting. It was amateur bracket. No offense, but nobody really cares about amateur bracket. But for this one set, everyone in the venue was watching. So can you imagine the amount of pressure that was on the two of us to win that set? It was astronomical pressure. That was more pressure than I felt trying to beat the top player that I beat when I was 13. I had more pressure just beating some girl in amateur bracket. I ended up winning that set and as a result, of so many people hyping that up and being like, oh, look at that, Kiwi's the best female smasher, look at that, she's the better girl, etc, etc. This other girl felt so embarrassed, intimidated, outcasted, etc, just because she didn't feel valid anymore. Nobody was talking about her, they're only talking about that young girl that's better than her now. She's, she's not the best female smasher, oh, look at that, Kiwi is. So she started to treat me really, really, really harshly. We teamed at a major tournament once and we didn't do super well, and she was posting that it was my fault and I'm a bad teammate. She was telling people in person and online that she's better than me. She challenged me to to a $50 money match at a major tournament and I was like a child. I didn't have that kind of money to money match. But she was so embarrassed by that experience and by everyone comparing us and saying I'm the better girl that she just felt rage and stress inside. That she couldn't simply just compete without being reminded that there's girls better than her. Which let me touch further on this. I have been on that end too. In Smash 4, you know what happened to me all the time? I would go to these tournaments, I'd have an acquaintance come up and be like, oh hey, how'd you do? And I'd be like, oh, I got 65th, not bad. And they'd be like, oh, that's cool. Did you see Supergirl Kells? She got 17th. 
that's really cool. And I would be like, why, why, why are you bringing, wh what does this have to do with Kells? Why are you bringing up Kells to me? And this happened literally every major I went to that Kells also went to, everyone would just bring her up to me. And I think the reason is that we were both women competing. These dudes come up to you and they're like, oh, you're a girl. Uh, what, what, what? What do I talk about with you? Oh, well, well, there's this other girl that's doing really well. And they, you know, they don't really see the harm in that. I want to address really quick. A lot of guys at these tournaments aren't malicious. They don't have bad intentions with the things they say. They're just not socially aware. You know, we're in a gaming community. Let's be real with ourselves. A lot of people don't join these communities as the most socially aware butterflies. I'm like that too. I joined this community as a complete asshole because I didn't know what I was doing and it took many many years to learn how to be a socially acceptable human being. Like, yeah. You can come at it like oh my gosh like I didn't like that why are they acting weird or you can realize like what you said like a lot of people in the Smash community are just really awkward or have uh, lesser social skills and like they genuinely don't mean harm and aren't harmful. This is kind of a random tangent but just try to be a little sympathetic when guys give comments like this. I know that it's incredibly annoying but they're probably not coming from a bad place even though we need to work on that and they should be held accountable. But the point I'm trying to drive home is that this isn't something that happens with guys. You know just an example from people from my region you know I don't think people are gonna go up to Ling Ling you know, really solid player. You know, what if Ling Ling gets 33rd at a tournament? Are you gonna just go up to Ling Ling and be like, oh, that's great, you got 33rd and all, but did you see Light? He got 7th. Like, Light got 7th. It's like, you don't do that, right? I would hope you don't do that. But with girls, it's such a common thing. Again, I should bring up the whole comparison thing. Yeah, um, there's even women in our community that didn't recover the way like you did, you know, where it's like, you were compared so much to me or to Nicole and that all like without trying that will build anger and resentment towards other women of I need to play better than them right and you've learned to get on the good side of that you know treat it as a good thing instead of just like treat it as another player instead because you have competed for so long and have learned that but there's other women that we know that egos are just you know and and they don't come back from that it was really ultimate when i started seeing those posts because yeah. there was more women performing great you know it wasn't just one or two it was it's multiple so yeah. that's when we saw multiple posts and and then i was being tagged and i was like what is this yeah why is this what and then i was just so mind boggled that i messaged you and i was like what the heck is this? <laughs> like, I was so mad, so. Yeah, yeah. well, cause like, how are you supposed to take Answer. that? Like, yeah. how are you supposed to react when someone posts, okay, who's the best female smasher? And then you see all these replies like, it's Kells, it's Kiwi, it's Fuel, it's Kells and Kiwi. Bro, dude, I just wanna play. I, I'm just here to play. I'm not here to be ranked for my fucking vagina. <laughs> not all women have vaginas. We're including transgender women as well. Yes, ma'am. But Kiwi, you know, this animosity you're talking about wasn't a result of female-only brackets. A, from Brawl and Smash 4, sometimes it was. A lot of the times I noticed that female-only brackets did happen, I was brought up in discussion. Like, oh, Kiwi should go, or oh, Kiwi is going to get a free win, or oh, Kells is going to get a free win, or oh, Nicole's going to get a free win, etc, etc. So even though I tried my damnedest to avoid them, I was still dragged into those discussions for the fact that those tournaments simply existed. It's really toxic too, like another example is, you know how Nintendo has in the past done these invitational events, you know, they did one for Smash 4, they did one again for Ultimate, they've done other events like that. And I remember that there were discussions of like, oh, you know, Nintendo needs female representation at, the, at these events, which girls should they choose? And those were the worst, because then you have people bringing up like, oh, well, who are the most important girls in the community? Are, are, is it these, is it Kells or Kiwi or Fua for being good at competition? Do we want 
Vicky Kitty or redacted for their commentary. And it's just like, those conversations were the worst because our worth to be invited to an event was being dictated by like how good we were at the game compared to other girls. It's like, oh, invite Kiwi to this event or Kells to this event because they're better than these other girls. That really rubbed me the wrong way. And I think that's the biggest example I have to give of the impact that this has. Um, I've definitely seen girls talking about like, oh, I'm performing for like all girls and like I wish that we could sort of move away from that mindset because right. I think it's way healthier to just be playing for yourself and mm -hmm. people, I don't think people are really thinking about it that way. Even if they are, like you can't really, like it's not your responsibility to change that. If you're like putting in the work and you're again you're just kind of focusing on your own journey and not being pressured to represent anyone else like you're just representing yourself you know and, and you're working on improving yourself getting better i think that's just one of the more important things that to think about when you're competing at the end of the day it's true that these comparisons don't always happen as a result of female only brackets but the problem with female only brackets is that you are basically telling the men that it is okay to compare us the whole idea of like all the girls just fighting each other to like i don't know in a just female bracket it's kind of it kind of leaves a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth mm -hmm. and i know some other people have mentioned that too like some other girls are like oh i don't really like the the sort of like girl cat fight sort of thing like even right. if it's not exactly that like like some people like i'm sure you've seen it on twitter people will be like who's the best female smasher oh blah, blah, blah. yeah <laughs> yes yeah. ma'am yeah <laughs> and like i don't know like that kind of stuff is kind of weird because i don't know i don't really like girls being pitted against each other just because like oh you're a girl and you do right. this like are you the best like because no one really does that for guys like they'll say oh who's the best smasher but right. it's not about like their gender or whatever yeah no and, one like, is like who's the best male smasher <laughs> <laughs> it's harder to compare women in co-ed tournaments because very rarely you're seeing women compete against each other but once you separate with that common denominator of being a woman you have all the right in the world to rank us i guess whoever won that tournament is now the best girl let's talk about that let's praise her let's throw her name everywhere and make all these other girls feel like like shit. So the men are going to be more likely to make these rankings, to make these comparisons, and the women are also likely to feel this tension and this pressure of like, oh shit, like we're, everyone's looking at us, everyone's talking about who the best girls are, I guess I really gotta perform or I'm not valid. And that is an awful feeling. I've been on both ends of it. Again, I was compared to girls in Brawl, I was compared non-stop to Kells specifically in Smash 4. And now in Ultimate, I have really understood what it's like to be on the other end, where people have brought me up a lot of like, Kiwi's the best female smasher in Ultimate. Getting a bit off topic, but most of my bad experiences in my life and even in the Smash community have been with women. I have been bullied primarily by women. So it's a terrifying thought to think that I already have trouble getting along with women and then just for being good at the game and these guys feeling the need to compare me to all these other girls, they might not like me so much. Just like the impact that the girl in Brawl had with me, just like the impact that it had with me and Kells. As a minority group, we should all be trying to lift each other up instead of arguing who is the best between us. That's not gonna solve our problems in this community. That is just going to create new ones. And although that I agree that we are better now than we used to be back in Brawl and even Smash 4, I'm afraid to even try testing this out when we're all in a competitive community for a reason. I think competition drives us all to some degree. It is natural to want to win against your opponent, to be better than your opponent. So when we make it so your opponents are all women, you're gonna be wanting to be the best girl in the room, not just the best player. And that's going to cause animosity, whether you intend it to or not. There's no prize for being the best female, yeah. it just 
it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Like we're trying to create a community that welcomes all LGBTQ, yep. uh, you know, men, women, non-gender, like everybody. So why are we having female only tournaments? It, it puts women against each other. Yeah. And it's only going to create tension between women. I'm better than you. I'm better than you. I'm better. Th and then comparison. Yeah. You got to You got to You got to work as a team. Like we're so little of us. And it's like, why are you constantly just why are we calling each other bitches like sluts yeah. and whores? And it's like it reminds you of a freaking scene in Mean Girls. Like, <laughs> why do we have to be a mean girl? Yeah. It's true, though. Like, that's exactly what's happening. And it's like. We should all be supporting each other. We should all ask for each other for advice, especially that there's a lot of women in this community like you and I that have been here for so long and that have gone through this. So instead they can ask us or if there's yeah. new women that can help us, you know, that they might know stuff yeah. we don't. Well, uh, I mean, it, it does bother me when guys hyper focus on it because, mm -hmm. you know, women, women can not to any fault of their own, but they can internalize messages like that. You know, they want to, you know, be the best because there's only one seat at the table, you know. It's better to just build each other up, you know, instead of creating rivalries, in my opinion. And like I stated in all these previous examples, I think there are compromises we can make where these women want these safe spaces and they want these introduction to co-ed tournaments, but we I think we can do that in a setting that doesn't pin us all against each other. I think that Wi-Fi tournaments are a great place to start. I think that the casual women events like Smash Sisters are also a great place to start. I think another valid point to bring up against it is my fear due to how poorly ran they have been in the past. I don't think that's really argument to keep us from trying nowadays, but I think it's important to remember how these events typically go. You know, one thing that I've seen be a common trend, unfortunately, is these events are requiring documentation from their players to confirm that they're women, which can really drive, you know, transgender women and non-binary individuals away where it's like, you probably don't feel very validated when they're saying, oh, we don't believe you're actually a woman. Can you like give us some documents, please? And I, and I understand that the point of that is to make sure that men aren't weaseling their way in for malicious intent or whatever, but unless there's prize pots, I don't think men are going to do that anyway. I actually reached out to Christina, also known as Zen Graphics, who is a very talented individual in this community, and she is transgender, and I wanted to actually ask for her input on it. While I see there are benefits for female-only brackets, I personally don't feel they're good for two main factors. One, it creates a second-class event, where it gives rude men further ways to demean female competitors. And two, it doesn't support non-competitive players. Casters, TOs, artists, designers, etc. are just left dry, which makes a bracket feel very unbalanced. In the topic of how we handle non-binary and transgender individuals for these events, should they provide documentation, etc. Personally, I believe you should just believe people. As someone who hasn't been able to transition, as many others who can't or don't want to, there shouldn't be documentation. So if women are insisting that these events happen, I think that it's really important that we're inclusive to transgender women and non-binary individuals as well. And we would have to be extremely careful how we go about that. The last reason why I'm not fully for women's only brackets is because I feel like these brackets are putting a band-aid on a much larger problem. If we have these female only brackets, nothing is gonna be solved in the co-ed tournaments. If our fear is equality and being mistreated and harassed at co-ed tournaments, we're still gonna be mistreated and harassed at co-ed tournaments whether we have female only brackets or not. I think instead of putting the band-aid of female only tournaments, we should be going after the core problem of misogyny in the community. A lot of people are gonna argue, oh, you're never gonna fix that, it's always gonna be unequal. And whether that's true or not, I don't like that argument. Nothing ever gets done if you tell yourself that it can't be done. 
So I at least want to try working on these issues better. I do think that June and July of 2020 were quite the eye openers and since then the community and especially the local regions within the community have been trying to do their part to make the scene safer but i think that we can take it a step further i actually got a really great dm on this from bunny bella or bumble bella underscore on twitter and i wanted to read her reply here basically i am really in the middle of the issue I think there's a lot of women who want female-only events, so that makes me want to have them, but I think we have to be so careful about it and be sparing with events. Historically, many female-only events have been ran poorly, if not outright traumatized people, and the half-assed attempts really make it worse, like salt in the wound. Some men aren't a monolith, so it's important to keep in mind that not everyone will support it just for the fact that we're women and vice versa. However, I see enough women wanting it for people to at least try and go from there. I really think either stance should just support what out whatever outcome happens. Because, like, we need to stick together and have a space where women can feel comfortable around other women, too. But it's weird, because women aren't the only gender minority in the scene, let alone marginalized identity. I think we just happen to be the most visible. Gamers with disabilities, women of color, non-binary people, people who don't otherwise identify as a man or women. Are we willing to make space for them, too? Or do people just want to do female-only events for publicity or PR, etc.? We genuinely need to make a commitment to every marginalized group, not just binary women. And many attorneys can't even boast protections for marginalized people. Attorneys always have some shit going on and I don't want that to reflect poorly on female-only events. Furthermore, female-only events shouldn't be main bracket or main event or a permanent thing. Attorneys need to eventually become suitable for all people to feel safe. And god, where do we start with that? Changing the whole culture is easier said than done. But at the very least, accountability, better safety attorneys, less alco alcohol and drugs, the whole nine yards. I think female-only events also need to be run exclusively by women and made even physically away from men or else, as many women have put it, it just feels like being on a display at a zoo exhibit. Even just the presence of too many people, men specifically, can be overwhelming for most. Another thing too that makes me wary is the whole number one female comparisons that will inevitably be made when female only events would possibly happen. That and objectifying comparisons lists and needing to make sure the events don't foster internalized competition and misogyny. So I very much agree with this individual's take that as great as an idea of these events are, I think we need to tackle the bigger issue of why we want these events to begin with. And why we want these events is because there's still so much unfair treatment and misogyny within this community. I think one potential solution, uh, this, this won't fix everything, but I do think that like when we're talking about our experiences with like Brawl and Smash 4, um, obviously the community is skews very young even now, like in Ultimate. Like we will always have a steady stream of like, uh, 15 to 20 year olds entering our scene, still learning about how to like communicate with people and how not to be shitty. So we, there will always be like some level of like random sexist comments. Yeah. Um, but I also think that we're older now and, and we're wiser. And like with, with, with leadership and good behavior modeling, it could be possible to mitigate some of that like cattiness. I, I, I hate the word catty because people only use it to talk about girls. Yeah. But like, but like the way that, um, you know, people were trash each other online uh, or, or, you know, the, somebody making Facebook posts about you or um, like, when I think about it, there are some guys that do that shit too. Um, and how do we handle them? Well, a lot of times they just get like socially isolated. Like no one wants to play with them anymore because maybe they're ragers or, or they do shit like that. I think with good role models and visibility, um, you know, it wouldn't fix it, but we could, we could like cut that down before it gets, really bad um, and I would say that's even like something that happens at locals regardless of gender right like some scenes have TOs that like let things slide and the whole scene becomes eventually the lowest common denominator of behavior whereas some TOs that are that are more mature or like willing to say like hey we don't act like that they're gonna see better like retention of players and stuff like that step one is the acknowledgement that this is a problem and the acknowledgement that women are very often harassed or judged 
when they go to co-ed tournaments by men. Right. So that's step one. Step two, I think, is, you know, since the argument here is in person, women feel unsafe. So I think at co-ed tournaments, there should be like an assigned leader, like whether it's a TO or you have an assigned, I don't know what you'd call it, not like security, but- Yeah, not security, but more just like, a, like, like a, not a counselor, but- Yeah, just someone who you can some, go just to. Just some guidance. Just right. like a moderator would be maybe a Yeah, term. tournaments should have that person at all times to where, hey, this guy's making me uncomfortable or whatever, and I need someone to talk to about it. Yeah, and I had I, that once. I was at a Frame Perfect series. Oh, I two, remember that. Yeah, yeah. And someone was really bothering me. And yep. shout out to the disciple. He really stepped up and took that role and took care of me. Yeah. Um, so, like, yeah, that's that. That's a perfect example. I think we need a disciple at every event. Right. <laughs> that sounded so weird to say we need a disciple. <laughs> so I think having an actual distinguished person with that role where it's like hey like big red arrow i'm the one you come to if you're uncomfortable and i will help you type of thing and the last step is applying universal and consistent consequences to those who harass anyone not just men but also women anyone i wish that there was leaders in the community or even representatives who work and have degrees in law or um like accounting and all yeah. that stuff yeah. that really understand what are the consequences universally for doing things and making certain decisions and what is the appropriate step that they should take right so we do need that because us here are, we're just we're just smash players yeah know? yeah and like and unfortunately our community we were we brought up ourselves like we were created by the community. It wasn't a company taking care of this, supplying security and all that. We made our own community. Right. And that's what's really dangerous because, and even though like I, it was, it's amazing and it's the best community ever, it, it also comes with us being naive and not knowing what we can do better. Right. right. So having people with expertise outside of just, let's get the community rolling, then that would be great. It's so hard, um, but I agree that like protecting each other or being protected, like, hey, <laughs> the code of conduct committee. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like right now, it doesn't feel like many things are handled because no one, there's no like upper group. There's no order. It's just all of us trying to like on the same level or like, you know, TOs, I guess are on a different level, just trying our best to like be safe and enjoy ourselves in a place where there's constant turnover of people and there's no clear rules and there's no company that like needs to look out for us for its own public image sake. This is very much easier said than done. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know the perfect answer. I don't have all the solutions of how we tackle this issue and how we make the community safer. Personally, what I am doing is I am just trying my best to be any other player. I am not reminded that I am a female player until topics like this come up. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm not seen as a normal player by a lot of people. I'm, I'm a female player. I'm some weird alien version of a Smash player. So I am trying my best to just play. I'm not a female Smash player. I'm just a Smash player. And I am going to keep competing and trying to kick ass to the best of my ability and normalize women competing, especially at high level. And hopefully that will aid in misogynistic behavior lessening in the future as it just becomes more and more normal to see women competing in this space. And yeah, I don't blame women for maybe not wanting to compete or being afraid to compete because there are side effects of added pressure and potentially harassment and unfun stuff like that. But instead of sitting here and talking about how miserable it is and how horrifying it is, we need to acknowledge the problems for sure. But I think I also want to try and encourage women to just try your best, you know, give it a shot. You may be surprised. I actually recommend if you can go to a tournament with someone you know or someone you're comfortable with, it makes it a lot easier. 
one of the reasons I was able to make it through all those tournaments in Brawl is because I had my two trusted brothers with me. I felt safe with them. And now I don't need them anymore. I go with friends, sure, but I don't rely on them for safety. Now I feel confident that I can attend tournaments without them and that I will be safe. So in conclusion, I am not pro female only brackets i am pro female only casual events like smash sisters i think those are fine i think those are fine temporary safe spaces for women until we are able to work on the core problem and i think it's important to remember that no matter which side you're on we're all on the same page here i think we all just want what's best for everyone in this community and again we all just have different visions of how to get there. Can you say goodbye to the people, Luna? Can you say goodbye? Can you say goodbye, puppy? Oh, yes, yes. Say bye.